Whoa, I just noticed something. Qui-Gon is played by a real person. Why didn't you fuckers tell me? Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me the kid isn't CGI. Lucas thinks the mere appearance of Jabba will make us jizz our pants, but Lucas is wrong as hell. Is there seriously nothing that tells Anakin that some part of his pod is broken right now? Okay, I'll admit it, pod racing is badass, and I'll even give two sins off for it, but it's not gonna help this piece of trash's ultimate sin score that much. Just in case you were wondering what happened to this guy you didn't care about, here's a scene explaining what happened to him. Alien rat carcasses here! Get your alien rat carcasses here! Uh, so Bulba's in the lead, followed closely by Skywalker! Okay, so how did Anakin catch up to Sebulba after his pod didn't start for the first 20 seconds of the race? And if his pod is faster, then why hasn't he blown past him already? He's had two major delays and somehow he's right behind the leader. Remember when Sebulba sabotaged Anakin's pod before the race even started? Yeah, after three laps and going zany miles per hour, only now does that affect the ship. So these computer screens tell you when something's wrong after all, but only after a ton of damage has been done. Aw, isn't that cute? This movie thinks it's been her. <laughs> Jabba does an impression of me watching a NASCAR race. Well, we have all the essential parts we need. I'm going back. If you hear groaning, it's because these camel aardvark things are CGI abominations that were called into existence by an unmerciful god. Our meeting was not a coincidence. Yeah, it was. Look at the things that had to happen before they ran into Anakin. He had to stumble on Jar Jar on another planet, take him in, have him show them where his home was, get released by the Gungans, survive going through the Naboo Corps, have ship problems on the way to another planet, just happen to land on Tatooine, befriend the child slave of a guy who sold the part they needed, and then have Jar Jar accidentally get into a fight with a professional pod racer so Anakin could break it up. Even then, the kid just kind of joined him without an invite. And I still don't think he cleaned those racks! So what the hell has this probe been doing the whole time? Darth Maul sent three of these things out late one night, about 25 minutes ago in movie time. These things couldn't find the broken down ship for one whole evening, during the pod racing the next day, and the five hour goodbye to Annie's mom? Qui-Gon and Anakin are already running long before they know a Sith is just about ready to attack. Anakin, drop! Why couldn't you feel Darth Maul approaching a lot sooner than this? Thank God George Lucas shot this lightsaber battle in super close up jump cut vision because I almost figured out what was happening in this scene. Take off. Why doesn't Obi-Wan help Qui-Gon fight this guy? Neither of the Jedi are important for this ship. They just need to get Queen Amidala to the Senate. And later, the Jedi Council tells him to go investigate Darth Maul anyway, so why not now? Anakin Skywalker, meet Obi-Wan Kenobi. Meeting that should have been a lot cooler than it is. We're a democracy. The people have decided. Tuck him away. Skip. Padme will go from maternal figure in this film to sexual partner in the next. Like that. And that is creepy as f***. Space is cold. It sure is, but aren't you on a ship? Doesn't it have heat? I made this for you. I carved it out of a poor snippet. When did you have time to do that? The total time Qui-Gon and everybody was down on the planet was like three days, and most of that time was spent fixing up your pod racer. Also, Japor snippets. But I don't need this to remember you by. Because we already have a creepy romantic connection that won't be spoken of aloud until you're old enough for me to see your Japor snippet, if you know what I mean. Wink. Many things will change when you reach the capital, Annie. It's called puberty. Coruscant. The entire planet is one big city. Thanks, narrator. I'm grateful for your concern, Chancellor. Do you think that maybe this fake queen has actually been playing the queen for so long she's gone too deep undercover? Do you think maybe she feels like she's actually the queen right now? These airships all stay in their lanes, despite there not being any clear Back to the Future 2 lane markers or anything. Queen Amidala, you look so obviously different from the last time I saw you. How do those handmaiden disguises even work? The courts take even longer to decide things than the Senate. They do? Well, sh It took an hour and 24 minutes for Yoda to even show up in this movie. You want to figure out where things went wrong? It's having Jedi play politics and only using their powers to smash up f***ing robots. Why didn't this movie start at a secret Jedi training ground? Something kind of like Dagobah, where Darth Maul comes in and assassinates a Jedi Master, played by Delroy Lindo or someone else 90s, and start the movie with that instead of tax law. A boy. His cells have the highest concentration of midi-chlorians I have seen in a life form. Therefore, he's a good guy, I think. It is possible he was conceived by the midi-chlorians. The midi-chlorians were later arrested for sex offense. You refer to the prophecy of the one who will bring balance to the Force. No, because Star Wars would never do anything as stupid as having some ancient prophecy muddy the waters, right? Who makes these prophecies? Which started right here with the taxation of trade routes. Star Wars Episode One. it's just as exciting as watching C-SPAN. I present Queen Amidala, recently elected ruler of the Naboo, who speaks on our behalf. Making my job as senator completely superfluous. Also, space politics. Also, this dangling dildo bullhorn hairdo. I know you want me to say something about the ET delegation down here, but I'm much more concerned about the Oogie Boogie delegation up here absolutely butchering the running man. The boy will not pass the council's test master. Jealous much? Do not defy the council master, not again. Movie hints at a much better movie that we'll never get to see. Mm, afraid to lose her, I think, mm hmm? Well, sh wouldn't you be too? Jedi Council makes it out like loving your mom is bad, assholes. Fear is the path to the dark side. 
Movie continues assault on fear, as though it never once led to a saved life or an avoided accident. Also, if you're telling me no Jedi has ever had fears, f*** you, Yoda. You're a liar and a dickhead. Everyone has fears. Why don't you just teach the kid how to move beyond them instead of acting like he's a total cheese for even having them? Samuel L. Jackson, just grateful to be in these f***ing movies, will now stroke his chin knowingly. You're so thinking, you said people gonna die? Ladies and gentlemen, the power converters line of the new trilogy. No. He will not be trained. Yoda just went on a rant about how fear leads to the dark side, but isn't the council practicing fear by not allowing the training of Anakin? An apprentice you have, Qui-Gon. Impossible to take out a second. The code forbids it. Why? I heard Yoda talking about midichlorians. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? Skip. I don't understand. I think Jake Lloyd got a bum rap. Look at the cast of this movie. It's full of amazing actors. Ewan McGregor, Samuel L. Jackson, Natalie Portman, Liam Neeson, Keira Knightley, and they're all playing blocks of wood. I can almost hear Lucas on set. That was a good take, but try doing the line more like you're dead inside. You know, like you're a computer. Lucas deserves any and all sins that might otherwise have been directed at the actors in this movie. Come on, R2. There's no chance you can roll up the high edge of this platform, but we'll cut away before that so no one will ever know. Did something happen to the blockade? Remember, absolutely nothing changed since they left, except the Trade Federation has a tighter stronghold on the planet, so why the free reign to fly into Naboo all of a sudden? I am Queen Amidala. Huh? I'm sorry for my deception, but it was necessary to protect myself. How were you also fooled by the sh Ancient statues that are never explained and have no bearing on the plot accidentally inspire Lost. We shall make you bombard general. Well, he certainly is qualified. We can enter the city using the secret passages on the waterfall side. Secret passages? Ex Machina. Somehow George Lucas manages to rip off the never-ending story. Once we get inside, you find a safe place to hide and stay there. The f*** is he doing on this mission anyway? Why isn't he chilling in Obi-Wan's apartment somewhere watching cheesy How to Be a Jedi videos? <laughs> Phantom Menace accidentally inspires all the albums made by T-Pain. <laughs> Prequel screen. That guy should have ejected. Steady, steady. Oh, no one's listening to your dumbass. Well, sh why didn't they just do this before? Also, what kind of force field keeps out cannon fire, but lets droids just walk through it? We'll handle this. I don't know why the Jedi have to take Darth Maul by themselves. They have a whole army behind them that could easily take him out right now. Well, Darth Maul is a criminally underused badass, and Duel of the Fates is one of the finest pieces of film score ever written. So we'll take three sins off here without looking back. Wait, here it is! While looking for the trigger, Anakin, a trained pilot, first pushes two dashboard buttons before grabbing the obvious trigger device. Everything this scene is and represents. Also, in the span of six seconds, Jar Jar hits more targets than all the stormtroopers in the entire Star Wars franchise combined. And on accident. Why isn't Anakin dead? He doesn't even know how to fly this thing yet, and he's running straight into the enemy without any problem. I'll try spinning! That's a good trick! Yeah, try that, asshole kid we hate, who we already know is going to survive whatever bullshit we see. Try that. Birds! We're about to see our first true scene of suspense in the movie, but what the hell is this place? This is some Galaxy Quest shit here. Oh yeah, the Gungans are fighting in this battle. I completely don't care about them. I mean, forgot about them. Jar Jar makes a fantastic tactical decision by complete accident. No! no. Your occupation here has ended. After her! This one's a decoy! Look, I know you want to make these Trade Federation guys half-wits, but do they really think the real queen would just run out in the open like this to save a decoy? Also, why were they certain the unmade-up queen was the queen anyway? I know Amidala came out from hiding to the Gungans, but to the rest of the world too? Well, it isn't a Jedi-Sith duel without there being an impossibly unending fall of some kind nearby. What's that? It's blowing up from the inside! Yeah, <laughs> funny story. Some little kid accidentally autopiloted one of our spacecraft inside the enemy ship and then accidentally fired a torpedo to set off the very chain reaction we need to defeat this thing. I know, I didn't believe it either, but what are you gonna do, am I right? Now this is pod racing! No, it's not. Too bad you don't have the thousand other ships that were forming the blockade earlier. Oh well. Enemies are controlled by one power source and die when it explodes cliche. Darth Maul taunts Obi-Wan here, but wouldn't it be pretty easy for him to kill Obi-Wan by, like, spear-throwing his lightsaber five feet down into Obi-Wan's face? I mean, where's he gonna go to dodge that shit? Darth Maul stands perfectly still while Obi-Wan does all this bullshit to kill him. Also, the coolest character this trilogy has gets killed like a little bitch in the first movie. It's, it's too late. You're still alive? Goodbye, Qui-Gon. I'll be sure to mention you in the next trilogy. Psych! Now, Viceroy. Why did Amidala bother going back into her queen makeup and outfit and shit after doing battle with her soldiers? Did they actually sit around and wait for her to get all formal before sending the Viceroy back? Confer on you the level of Jedi Knight the Council does. Because you killed that one Sith guy, and not because you passed whatever nebulous trials were talked about earlier, but which were never shown. Grave danger, I fear, in his training. Fear leads to the dark side, Yoda. Agree with you, the Council does. 
The Jedi Council changes their mind about training Anakin because he lucked out destroying the droid ship. They still sense fear in him, right? Nothing else has changed, right? Qui-Gon's funeral is, for some reason, held on Naboo. What will happen to me now? You turn into Hayden Christensen, of course. There's no doubt the mysterious warrior was a Sith. Mm. Always two there are. Except when you kill one, right? Then there's only one, right? Right? But which was destroyed? The Master or the Apprentice? This would be a great way to end the movie. But, well, the first movie ended with a big celebration, so I guess this one has to as well. not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. Open war is upon you. Whether you would risk it or not. There are fields here. Endless fields. Where human beings are no longer born. We are grown. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming. I need parts for a J-Type 327 Nubian. What's a Nubian? Cycle. Break off a stray from the herd and flush him to the right. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Double impact. There's two of them. Now there are two of them. This time, there are two. Terminator 2. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I'm glad to have met you, Anakin. I was glad to meet you, too. Oh, Lawrence, this is the happiest day of my life! I think my testicles are dropping! Oh boy, oh boy, Mom. You sure can hydrate a pizza. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this year's annual Las Vegas International Dodgeball Open, brought to you exclusively here on ESPN 8, The Ocho. There's only one person who guns an engine like that. It's gotta be the roughest, tough guy of them all, Machine Gun Joe Viterbo! Ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir, I've never been up in a plane before. Have you ever seen a grown man naked? You will bow down before me, both you, and then one day, you're out! You maniacs! You blew it up! Damn you! Oh.